How's it going guys? Welcome to FTO News. Today we're going to talk about the crow, Luke freaking Cage, and that giant elephant in the room. You all know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's start it out with movie news. Movie news! So James O'Barr just confirmed new cast members to the crow movie. Jack Houston from Broadwalk Empire. Haven't really watched an episode of that show, just never got into it. But he's going to be Eric Draven and Jessica Brown Finley. I forget where she's from. I think it's Once Upon a Time, something like that. I don't remember. But they're unknown, pretty much. Unknown actors playing these roles. That makes me excited. Like, they have some screen time on TV so you can see kind of what their acting is, but you don't really know them that well. And I am pumped for that reason. Luke Evans was supposed to be the crow, but he bailed out after all the production crap going on with the movie. But this is awesome. I'm going to be excited to see the new crow movie. Hopefully they make it more modernized, more like for today's audience and whatnot, because that's going to be freaking awesome. So awesome. Next up, TV news. TV news! So Mike Coulter, the guy who's playing Luke Cage, talks about how the new show Luke Cage is going to be geared more toward adult audiences. So all the adult fans out there, rejoice, because the new episodes of Luke Cage are going to be just for you. I'm so damn excited about that. Ugh. Because I was thinking it was going to be more PG-13, just like how Daredevil was probably going to be. At least I hope it's not. But adult audiences, man. It may not be MA, but it might have like a lot of adult situations is what I'm thinking inside of it. So hopefully, hopefully. Marvel's been doing well with all their properties so far. So for, you know, Ghost Rider. We won't talk about Ghost Rider. But yeah, I'm excited for this. Tell me you're freaking excited for this too. Luke Cage, man. Little cage. And here we go. Comic book news. <laughs> Comic news. Stuart Moment. He's doing, he did the all new X Men and the all new Captain America. If you guys are reading all new Captain America, you know his artwork. He's more of a cartoonist than a penciler or illustrator. He's going to be doing the Star Wars comic book once John Cassidy leaves. I don't know about you. But I'm freaking excited for this. Through the moments art, it's just, it's so cute and wacky. It reminds me of a less muscular Ed McGinnis, and it just flows well. I want to see how it's going to work inside the Star Wars universe, because he has such like a cute, fun style to his work. How is that going to translate to the Star Wars? I've been reading the Star Wars comic book, been reading the Darth Vader, not so much the Princess Leia. I know, I've been dropping the ball on that, but I'm excited for this. They say it's supposed to start around issue number seven or eight is when you're supposed to hop in. So if you're a big fan of Sir the Moment, you are going to love his work on Star Wars. Fingers crossed. Anyway. Also in comic book news, if you guys haven't heard about this comic book before, Danger Club. I talked about it in one of my old formats before about how I love Danger Club. This is like this is like a twisted version of say. What if all the superheroes in the DC and Marvel Universe, it was all connected and they all are missing, gone, or dead, and all the sidekicks take over? Try like to stop the president, who's a bad guy and also an ex-superhero, trying to stop this guy. Well, we're getting two endings, two finales of this. I'm pumped. I'm really freaking pumped for this because this just sounds awesome, man. I love this comic book. It's only going to be eight issues, but you get like, not a variant cover, but like a different ending. So you got two comic books with two separate endings to it. That's awesome. It kind of takes away from like the readers who's been reading it and want like one ending, but two endings. When's that ever happened? This may be like a new norm and image, making two endings for things. So you can choose between which ending was better to you. That's fantastic, man. That's the future of comic books right there, at least to me anyway. <sighs> okay, and lastly, in comic book news, We've all seen this picture floating around, and we've all had strong opinions about it. I've been a little bit on edge about talking about this, actually. Like, a little bit of butterflies in the stomach, little nerves rustling in, because a lot of people are pissed off for different reasons. My reasons are maybe a little bit different than some of your reasons out there. A lot of the feminists are angry because it shows Barbara Gordon being victimized by the Joker. And my thing is, it's the damn Joker. Time out for a second. 
I'm going to be swearing a lot through this. I'm not going to edit any of it. So I know a lot of you guys told me your kids watch my videos. You may want to take them out of the room. <laughs> I'm going to be swearing quite a bit. So the Joker, the Joker is a vile, sadistic son of a bitch. But I can understand why most feminists get pissed off about this cover because DC changed the image of Batgirl to suit for teenage girls and to show this variant cover to teenage girls after what the Joker did to her, that's pretty effed up. That's fucked up. That's wrong. Like you don't do that to fucking, you don't show that kind of crap to kids and make them go read a killing joke. Just, just no. But the Joker's evil and you should know what you're expecting when the Joker shows up. It's just, that's how he is. One of the, one of the pivotal moments that, that told me that the Joker's evil was in No Man's Land. Joker gathered up all the babies in No Man's Land. No one can get in and out of the city and Joker grabbed all the babies, put them at the bottom of uh, the basement of the Gotham Central Police Department. And Gordon's wife at the time, her babies when she was leaving the department, went downstairs to investigate, saw that Joker had all the babies, had one in his hand, drew her weapon on him, and the Joker throws the baby. She catches the baby, falls to her knees. The Joker picks up a gun, blows her brains out while all the babies are still around. Walks outside of the basement, puts his hands in the air and says, I surrender. The dude is nuts. If you don't know this, you haven't been reading comic books or you know nothing about the Joker. So the whole reason why feminists are really pissed off about that is I, I don't really get it. I kind of get it for the reasons that I said before, but it's the Joker, man. You should know better. The reason why I'm pissed, though, huh, the reason why I'm pissed is because, and I know a lot of you guys are gonna say, well, it's still in continuity, like those events still happen. All those stories are pre-52. The Killing Joke is pre-52. You can't take a story that's a masterpiece. The Killing Joke is a masterpiece. Even though I don't like Alan Moore, that story, it defines how Batman and the Joker see each other. It, it shows how everyone who sees Batman and Joker, it shows you how their relationship is together. Alan Moore told everyone that. This is how their relationship is. That happened in the pre-52. You can't take a story that's from the pre-52 and just throw it as a variant inside the new 52. After you say everything is gone, everything is wiped clean from continuity, but some stories are still there. And if you read the new 52, you saw Zero Year. You saw the Red Hood. You know it was Jack Napier underneath that hood. You know it was a Joker underneath there. Completely different character from the pre-52 character inside the killing joke. And in No Man's Land, again, with Barbara Gordon alone. She was in a wheelchair. She gave birth to Helena as Batgirl, Cassandra Cain, the birds of prey, Stephanie Brown. You can't just, you can't just say all those characters' origins are different because like the Joker still shot her in New 52, but it was different. You can't do that. And then DC puts it as a variant. If you're gonna do this, make an event out of it. You can't just slap it together and just say, I'm gonna make a couple of bucks off of this issue for all the fans out there who love the pre-52. DC is pretty much calling you a fucking moron because you're buying this. So they're doing this just to take your money and you're doing it. This is insulting to all of us, to all the fans out there and you guys keep buying these fucking covers. I read in the forum, some guy says, well, I already have the killing joke. I guess I gotta get this cover also. And don't get me wrong. This is awesome, but it does not belong in the New 52. And if you guys are saying like, oh, he's just being a fanboy. He's just complaining about the New 52. Of course I'm complaining about it. Have you not been watching my show? That's all I fucking do is talk about the New 52 and how it sucks. And this is like, and the fact that they took it down, they listened to all those protesting people. It's like, oh, I guess we should take it down because we're getting death threats. That's like, that's censoring art, man. You can't do that. You can't censor art. <laughs> uh, I sound like a crazy madman right now, and I get that. And I'm cool with that. Well, you can't just change shit just so you can make money, man. I want to try to like convey my emotions to you through an analogy. What if they remade Harry Potter? And Harry Potter, instead of going to a wizard school, went to a ninja school that was in space. And McGonagall was a cyborg. Dumbledore was a giant fucking cloud monster. And 
how Harry kills Lord Voldemort in the end, he uses a fucking gun and blows his brains out. Does that not sound fucking stupid to you? That's exactly how I feel about the new 52. Harry Potter shooting Voldemort in the head instead of using magic while he's a martial artist and doing kung fu moves at the same damn time. And Hermione and Ron, their thoughts in his head, they're not even fucking real. That's how I feel about the insanity of New 52. That's why I can't read that shit, because it's stupid. It is... <sighs> you have like a rich continuity of story with Harry Potter and the pre-52. If you change that shit around, just to suit the needs of like the new readers, you lose what made that thing cool in the first place. And I know a lot of you saying, well, Christ and Infinite Earth did the same thing. I get that. But he still kept the same essence that they had in the Golden and the Silver Age. That's all I got. That's it in my little rant. <laughs> and lastly, artist of the day. Today's artist is going to be Roboto Kuhn. Pretty much focuses more like a landscape. His landscape is gorgeous, but the characters he does, also beautiful. He has like a lot of samurai and martial arts, like influences inside of his work, a lot of video game references inside of it also. I saw one, he had Mega Man, but it, like Mega Man was like a little small, tiny figure and he's on top of a can. It looked awesome. I'm really, really pumped about this. It took me like, <laughs> took me like an hour to find this artist. I had to go ciphering through all the other ones I saw in it, but his work, I dig it. But yeah, that's it. Until next time. Whew, that was the hardest damn show I've done so far. Whew. <laughs>